Today we're pleased to have Aaron, who will be telling us about the chromatic tower. Yeah, that's right. This is uh, the last talk of the pre tablet seminar. Uh, I'm talking about the chromatic tower, um, which really, there's a whole lot to say about it. And so, uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is chromatic convergence. I'll tell you what that is in a second. Um, then I'll talk about the individual layers of the tower. And lastly, I'll talk about spectral sequences. Okay. Um, so let's start. Chromatic convergence. Okay, so... so um, You'll remember from David White's talk that there's this notion of Bausfield localization. And what I want to do, since we're going to be localizing with respect to it all the time, is that I'm going to just, just write ln for the localization with respect to all the Morava K theories starting at 0 and ending at n. And formal properties of Bausfield localization um, imply that there is tower of natural transformations and of course when you apply this to a space well to a spectrum X this is called a chromatic tower for X um, and you now I can tell you the chromatic convergence theorem so this theorem is due to Hopkins and Ravenel um, so the chromatic convergence theorem says that if x is uh, finite and p local, then, well, we've got x sitting at the top of this tower, and we have all these localizations on the way down, and what it says is that, well, there's a natural map from x to the limit of the tower, and in fact, this map is an equivalence. Um, uh, one quick remark is that uh, the household classes of the Morava K theories are minimal. There are, there are no smaller, there, there are no non-trivial household classes that are, that are closer to the trivial household class. And so what this implies is that the tower is unrefinable. So if we have ln going to ln minus 1, there is no intermediate localization. That's what I mean by that. Um, and so, if, uh, if you remember back also, we've been talking a little bit about stacks, and when you take homology of a space with respect to some homology theory, uh, you're supposed to cons you can consider this as a sheaf on the associated stack. And what's going on here is that, well, uh, really we're going to be talking about BP homology um, and the stack of p-typical formal proof laws for some p. I've already chosen a p. Um, and the idea of the chromatic convergence theorem, then, is that, well, if you have a sheaf on some, uh, some space and you have uh, a bunch of nested open subsets inside of that space, then you can, re you can understand the entire sheaf based on understanding its behavior on the restrictions to these open subsets. So in this case, those open subsets are, uh, so if this is formal group laws p-typical, uh, I'm talking specifically about the, the open substack of formal group laws whose height is uh, less than n. And so this is supposed to, well, I guess I should say n plus 1. And so ln corresponds to uh, restriction to this sublocus, something like that. It's not a perfect analogy, but that is basically what's going on in the background. Um, OK, and I want to indicate the proof of this theorem, and 
So let's begin with reduction. Um, it suffices to prove it uh, for the sphere. And the reason is that um, the class of, of spectra which satisfy the chromatic convergence theorem uh, is thick. So I'll remind you that thick means that it's close under weak equivalences, under cofiber sequences, and under retracts. Um, and this is really just an exercise, so you can go through it if you want, um, but I'm not going to prove it right now. Um, okay, so I'd like to make a further reduction, and for that I first need a definition. So let's define the functor Cn to be the fiber of this localization map. Every balanced localization comes with a localization map. And, well, from this what we get is uh, Cn to x to ln x. And taking limits everywhere, we get that this is also a fiber sequence as well. Um, and so the next reduction is that um, it suffices to show that for any M, well, here's a tower of here's a tower of abelian groups as N varies. Right, this is the tower associated here. Um, and here's a constant tower of abelian groups. And what I claim is that it suffices to show that this is a pro-isomorphism. So, of course, that's going to imply that the uh, limit of this tower is weakly contractible. And so then this is an equivalence. So I haven't said much. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about this here. And I just want to point out uh, that if we have some tower, uh, being pro-trivial, that is, being equivalent to the zero tower, pro-isomorphic, is not the same thing as saying that a n is zero for sufficiently large n. That's not true. And in fact, it suffices to have, um, for any n, that when you're mapping from high enough down, right, I'm just talking about towers here, but of course there are more general statements for arbitrary pro systems. When you map down from some arbitrarily high place, uh, it's zero um, for all sufficiently large s. So in fact, uh, this is what we're going to show for the tower that I claim is pro-trivial. Okay. So, in order to prove this, in turn, uh, there is another piece of input, which is the following theorem. And this is where MU actually starts to appear. So I, um, uh, I mean, of course, this whole story has everything to do with MU. And so MU really ought to appear in this proof. Uh, and the theorem, remember, we have this tower of the CNs. And the theorem is that if you take the MU homology of the natural map uh, this is the zero map and well the proof is a computation so you can also look that up I won't give it for you uh, but what I will say also is that uh, this is the starting point for the chromatic spectral sequence. And so I'll come back to that in a bit. I just want to point out that this, this fact is what, what we're going to start with. Um, OK, so given this theorem, I want to show you how we can use this theorem and a few other results to 
uh, imply reduction to. And so for that, I want to make yet another definition. So let's set mu bar to be the fiber of the unit map to mu. And what this gives is, well, you have a bunch of maps. Well, this has a natural map to the sphere. And you can, uh, from this, get a tower of maps, say, from this third smash power down to the second smash power, um, and all the way down to the sphere. And this isn't yet the definition. But the definition is that the, the atoms Novikov filtration the atoms Novikov filtration on anybody's homotopy groups uh, is given by setting the S level to be the image of well, you go to the s level here, and you smash that map with x. And so this is a decreasing filtration. Uh, of course, it starts with f zero. Well, f zero, we just have this to the smash zero, so we're smashing with the sphere, and everybody is in the image of the identity map. So f zero is pi star x. 1 is smaller than it, etc., all the way down. Um, and of course, this is the Adams Novikov filtration um, coming from the MU atom spectral sequence. It's not different. Okay. So I want to use this, and here's the way that I'm going to use it, is that if you have some map and you take its MU homology, and if the map on MU homology is zero, then, well, of course, there's also a map on homotopy. And what we can say about this map is that this map raises Adams Novikov filtration degree. Right, so if you're in pi star, then you're automatically in F0. You can ask, do you live in the sub object F1 going backwards? And what we're saying is that if you live in the sub object Fs for pi star x, then you're also going to be in S plus 1 for y. And this is pretty easy to prove, so I'll go for it. So suppose we have some element in homotopy of x. This composes to y. Uh, let's assume that it has filtration degree s. Well, that means that means that this factors through the s smash power here, and of course this composes down. And so what do we want? Well, I'm claiming that it actually uh, lives, uh, sorry, the element from here to here uh, lives in the s plus first filtration degree. In other words, it factors through here. So I'm claiming that there exists a dot in Well, if we want to figure out that there does exist such a dotted arrow, uh, the obvious thing to do is say, well, let's take the cofiber of this map and see what it looks like. Well, what is the cofiber of this map? This is just, say, getting rid of the, the first mu bar factor mapping into the sphere. And the cofiber of that is, by definition, mu. So we've got mu smash s copies of mu bar smash y. And up here, we've got mu smash s copies of mu bar smash x. Okay, so I'm going to draw some parentheses. 
And so when I'm claiming, okay, so I've got a map from here to here, and I want to claim that this map is null, okay? And in order for this map to be null, well, I mean, because this is a commutative diagram, it also factors through here. And so what I claim uh, is that, uh, well, the important point uh, is that the MU homology, so I'm, I'm taking homotopy here, really, I'm looking at a map on homotopy, and I'm, so I'm looking at a map on the MU homology of these two things, from here to here. And the important point is that the MU homology of MU bar is free uh, as an MU star module. So this is obvious if you take the MU homology uh, of the fiber sequence defining MU bar. Uh, you just look at it, and it is free. And so what this implies is that we get uh, Kunith isomorphisms. And so well, what that means is that the MU homology applied to this map is just S copies of the identity here, tensored with the MU homology map here. And what did we assume? We assumed that that map was zero. So that proves the statement. Uh, you just showed it was zero on homotopy, but you didn't say that the map is no. It's a cofiber, so you can't put it. No, 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 I see, I see what you're saying. Sorry, this, this map is not zero. The composition, this, this element is an element in homotopy. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, I showed that in. I think what I said is true because the enemy smashed that is injected. So, I think okay. it's like a board that has morphs and which makes it all work. All right. It's true. Okay, so, so here's the next reduction. Uh, it suffices to show, well, what did we just say? We said that all of these maps on MU homology of these fibers of this tower, we said that all of these were null. And so what this is saying, um, I'll give myself a little bit of space. So we have, say, pi m c n uh, plus s, and this maps to pi m c n. And well, what this says is that this is a composition of s maps that are all zero in MU homology, and therefore it raises the filtration degree by s, and so what we can definitely say is that here's the sth level uh, inside of here, and it factors into the sth level. And so it suffices to show that um, for all m and n, uh, Well, the filtration is finite. In other words, this filtration uh, piece is zero as soon as S is sufficiently large. And so I just explained exactly why that'll show that, well, eventually these maps in homotopy are trivial. And this is exactly what I said that uh, will imply that some tower is pro-trivial, namely that if for any fixed level, you go high enough up and all your maps down are zero. You can see in particular that the limit is going to be zero of this tower, but of course, I mean, pro-objects are interesting for a reason. Taking limit isn't generally an equivalence. Um, on the other hand, uh, you can just check by hand that this really does suffice. Okay, and we are almost done with the proof. Um, but to finish, I need to give one more definition. No, that's a lot. Two more definitions. Uh, so a map uh, is what I'll call n phantom. This is also called uh, phantom below degree n. If whenever you have a finite um, spectrum f and the dimension of f is less than or equal to n, so finite means it's a finite cell complex, and I really mean that its top cell is in degree n or less, then the induced map uh, on these groups from maps in from F uh, is zero. So you may recall that a phantom map means that this is true for any finite spectrum, 
And of course, what that means is just that to be phantom is to be phantom, to be n phantom for all n. Okay, and this is the last definition involved in this proof. Uh, so x is called mu convergent. If, for all n, there is some s uh, such that this map, the one that we've been talking about, is n phantom. And so what this implies is, uh, well, so as we vary s, we get a tower in homotopy groups. And of course, this maps to some constant tower. And what this implies is that that map of towers is actually a pro-isomorphism. So I think that this is maybe even a stronger condition uh, than saying that the, well, never mind. I don't want to say anything wrong. Um, let me give the last reduction, and then we, this one will actually be able to prove. So remember that we just reduced to saying that these filtrations are eventually zero. And these filtrations had everything to do with the maps on homotopy coming from here. And so this reduction uh, is, uh, it suffices to show that, in fact, if x is connected, then uh, All right, then CNX, right, all of these guys in this tower of fibers, uh, is MU convergent for all n. And finally, this reduction follows from three facts that are each easy to show. So I'll say what these facts are, and I'll at least tell you how they get proved. Um, so the first fact is that when x is connective, then x is automatically mu convergent. And well, if you think about what's going on, well, if you, if uh, if you're connective, that means you don't have homotopy groups below degree zero. And so we're smashing with mu bar a bunch of times. Mu bar is actually connected. That is to say that it doesn't have any pi zero. Um, and so when you take this big smash product. Uh, you don't have any, you know, up to equivalence, you don't have any cells uh, before dimension s minus 1 or something like that. And so by cellular approximation, you have no maps in from any finite spectra uh, of dimension less than or less minus 1. Um, the next fact, the next fact is that mu convergence uh, is thick. So thick is that same word I brought up earlier. Um, this is really just a diagram chase. And the last fact is that any uh, ln localization is mu convergent. And this is the hairiest of the three. This one actually involves uh, the smash product theorem. And I don't really want to get into it too much, but um, so I won't. Uh, so okay, so let's see why this implies reduction for. We just want to show that all of these CNXs are mu convergent. Well, really, we just care about the p-local sphere. So the p-local sphere is connective and hence mu convergent, and so any ln of it is also mu convergent, and then by thickness, CN of it is also mu. And that's exactly what we wanted to show, right there. And so that's it. That's the proof and broad sketches of the chromatic convergence theorem. Are there any questions? switch gears a little bit. Um, we've been talking about this tower, and um, this is a really great fact that you can understand finite spectra based on their 
ln localizations for all these variants of n. Um, and if you think about it, actually, well, L0 is just rationalization. Um, and so you can think of the rational stable category as some zeroth order approximation to the actual stable category um, in the sense that spectra are created from, you know, sphere, like cells and disks. Uh, and those are glued together using homotopy groups, but rationally, uh, the only homotopy groups of spheres are in pi zero. Um, so it's in that sense that, I mean, it's a zeroth degree approximation. Um, and so I want to, well, of course, if we want to understand the stable category, uh, we want to understand the layer by layer picture, and we want to understand how they go together. And so how do they piece together? Well, the first thing is there's this thing called the chromatic fracture square. And the chromatic fracture square, it says, is that um, well, let's have for any x, uh, right, this is a map in the tower, and this maps out to here. up to here, and what chromatic fracture says is that this is a pullback. Um, and of course, these are all functors, everything is natural. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is sort of, I mean, based on this heuristic involving the moduli of, of p-typical formal group laws, uh, this is sort of like a Meyer via Torres principle. So this has to do with... Um, restricting your sheaf to the, the locus of height less than n plus one. Um, this has to do with height uh, less than n. And then this is some sort of uh, formal completion of the point at exact height n. And so what we're saying is that in order to understand the sheaf, uh, here, we, well, we've got a covering. Uh, those, those two things that I just mentioned are, are a covering. And then there's some gluing data. And that's what I mean when I say my review to us. Um, okay, so then another thing, relatedly, well, so like I said, this thing is, is all uh, totally natural uh, in the sense that those are all functors. And so we have this sort of converse. And what the converse says is, well, I actually want to state the converse uh, categorically. So what the converse says, so the script S is going to denote the stable category. And what the converse says is that, well, if you take anybody here, here, and here, uh, throwing this away for a second, um, it's really not hard to check that uh, the pullback is going to be ln local again. And so what this is saying is that you can actually, well, so the important thing is that we have an arrow here of ln minus one local objects. And so one important thing is that arrow. Um, but then, of course, this needs to have a map from here. And so, well, what we care about is the target of that arrow. So the target of such an arrow lives in ln minus one. And then, of course, we need this object here. And so this is LKM of the stable category. And this maps down here via this localization. And the converse is that there's also this map, and that this is actually a pullback. So this is a categorical statement uh, of chromatic fracture. Um, and again, everything is sufficiently natural that this is actually at the level of infinite categories. Um, and so by by chromatic convergence, um, well, we have the finite p-local stable category, and this has a map to the limit of the ln localizations of itself. And in fact, you'd be tempted to say that this is an equivalence. And well, what we can definitely say is that it's fully faithful. Um, that's, that's the statement of chromatic convergence. Uh, I wasn't able to see uh, if, how I could prove that it might be 
essentially surjective. So I'll just put that with a bunch of question marks. Um, I guess it's, uh, I mean, it's plausible that it would be essentially surjective, but on the other hand, you might have a uh, spectra here that piece together nicely, but then, you know, somehow the, the, the finite spectrum that you're localizing keeps changing, um, and the limit doesn't actually have to be a finite spectrum after all. So, I don't know. Yeah. This was actually on that board, though. I think the counter example that someone suggested there was um, you take a type n spectrum for each n, so let's call that x of n. Mm -hmm. Then you take your, um, your, 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 you take the sequence of, uh, you take the sum of the first n, let n vary. I think those are going to piece together in the limit. Of the ah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is not true. It's not essentially surjective. Great, glad we cleared that up. Okay. Um, all right. Well, another thing we can do if we're interested in the layers is, well, we can also well we've got this map from the nth layer down to the n minus first layer, and we can take a fiber. And this fiber is called the monochromatic layers, the monochromatic layer. So we define a functor here to be the fiber of ln going down to ln minus 1. Um, and so that's going to be the fiber of this map right here for any particular x. Um, and this is very closely related to the, the KN local category. So, I mean, you can, you can kind of look at this picture of saying that, like, uh, the ln local category is something like a, a you know, a semi-direct product of, of the kn local and n minus 1 local categories. So you kind of think as, like, the, the kn local category is the extra, is the extra data that you need to, to stitch back up to the ln local picture. Um, and, well, mn is obviously another way of trying to figure out well, what is the difference between uh, these two layers? And so, in fact, these are quite related. So let me just come back down here for a second. Um, I left this space here for a reason. Actually, uh, this is the same thing as KN localizing. You can KN localize and then LN localize. And so, like I said, if you take the fiber here, you get MNX. But now you see this is actually just the map in the chromatic tower for LKN of X. And so then the fiber here is mn of lkn x. Okay? But wait a second, this is a pullback square, and so that means that the fiber of the right side is equivalent to fiber of the left side, and so we have the fact that if you kn localize and then you take the nth monochromatic layer, that's equivalent to just taking the nth monochromatic layer. On the other hand, well, um, so remember, mn is defined by this fiber sequence. And Gauss-Field localization preserves fiber sequences. So let me apply lkn everywhere. lkn, lkn. OK, so what do we get? Well, this one is actually contractible. Uh, and this one, well, if you ln localize and then kn localize, you may as well have just kn localized. And, well, if this is uh, the trivial functor, then this one is an equivalence. And, well, when you piece these two things together, um, in fact, what you can say is that there's an equivalence between the nth monochromatic stable category and the KN local stable category. And in fact, with a little bit of fussing, I think you can show that this is even a monoidal equivalence. Um, but I'm not sure, so I won't write that down. So the monoidal strike shown MN, would that just be ordinary smash product? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so um, on any, on any of these like localized type, I should say, MN uh, is not actually a localization. Uh, it doesn't even have a natural transformation from the identity. Um, but it's smashing um, because it's the fiber of two smashing functors. Right. And so, yes, you can define the smash product here to be just the ordinary smash product. Uh, over here, 
Well, this Joachim thing was a subcategory of the full stable category. When you smash the other two canonical spectra, you don't necessarily get a canonical spectrum back. Um, and so what you do, well, if you want to define a smash product from this, then you just re-canonicalize. Um, but I do think that if you just mess around with things, you, you get monocal ones. If you get bored, you can try to, you can try to write it down. Oh, what do you mean when you said M and it's uh, well, mn is a functor, yeah. and if you have any spectrum x, you want to figure out what's mn of x, it's mn of the sphere oh. smash oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. x. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've told you about some things about the layers. I've told you about chromatic fracture and its, and its converse. Um, and I've talked a little bit about the monochromatic layers, and I want to say something else about the monochromatic layers. Uh, so you may recall that last week Akil told us all about how you can get all of these families of periodic families of elements in the stable homotopy groups of spheres. And those, you may recall, arise from uh, self-maps, VN self-maps of finite type N spectra. Um, and what's great is that actually, for any, for any spectrum X, the nth monochromatic layer also has such a decomposition of this homotopy into periodic families. So, pi star M N X uh, So how does this work? Well, okay, so uh, I'm going to write I uh, for a sequence of n indices. Um, and then for, well, not for all I. This is one of these hairy issues surrounding questions of the existence of smith toda complexes. But for a final set of I, uh, there exists uh, what people tend to call generalized generalized Moore spectra. And so this is M of I, I'll write for short, um, by which I mean this will indicate what it is supposed to be. So P to the I zero this is terrible. P, P to the I zero uh, all the way, way up to V N minus one to the I N minus one. Um, what is this? Well, this is supposed to be one of these finite type N spectra. And uh, I mean again it's it's a generalized Moore spectrum, so if you just throw this away, you're getting an honest Moore spectrum um, in the usual definition. And, uh, well, with these in hand, we can uh, give a, a presentation, you could say, of the monochromatic layer of X. The nth monochromatic layer is equivalent to the co-limit over these I of, well, you take the LN localization of X and then you smash it with this generalized Moore spectrum. Okay, so, well, now you can start to see where this is going. Um, these guys uh, admit VN self maps, uh, by which I mean a map which induces uh, an, uh, an isomorphism uh, on VN, or on, on Moravic K homology multiplication by VN to the I n for some potentially very large I n. Uh, but choosing one, well, suppose we've got an element in homotopy, let's say S m of m n x. Well, now that we've presented this as a co-limit, well, the sphere is small, so this has to factor through some finite stage. Sorry, can you specify the maps 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. It's the difference. I mean, right. Z mod P and Z mod P squared have maps going both ways. It's the same, same thing. Uh, so, so there is some index i for which uh, there's going to be, I'll call this alpha, uh, for which there's going to be such a factorization. Um, now that we have this, well, we can compose through a bunch of times, and I'll say that this is the identity on the ln x factor, and this is the whatever vn self map that we obtained uh, on m of i, and then I'm taking the x compositional power. And this is a self map, it maps to some d suspension, I won't write the index, uh, of itself. And then we can re include this back into. Um, so, in fact, it turns out that this map, uh, this map is an equivalence, and you can, you can check that because uh, you can check that this is, well, uh, so this is, this is ln local, and this is finite type n, and it turns out when you smash those guys, you get something which is kn local. Uh, now, I just told you that each of these maps is a kn equivalence, so the kn equivalence of kn local spectra is an equivalence. Um, and so what is this bias? Well, this gives us uh, elements alpha sub, I want to call it s times i sub n, in the, now I can tell you the index, it's m plus s times i n times the size of v n, homotopy group of m n x. Uh, and of course, alpha zero is just alpha, right? We don't do any of these. Same inclusion. Um, and so we get these periodic families. Uh, now, of course, we made a bunch of choices here, right? Like we chose which m of i's to use. Um, we chose which vn self map to take. Um, we chose which one to factor through, etc. cetera. Um, those are a lot of choices, and those choices do matter. Um, but you may remember also from last week that there are these sort of asymptotic uniqueness results uh, for VN self maps, right? So for instance, any two VN self maps um, eventually agree when you take sufficiently high powers of them. Uh, moreover, any two maps that intertwine between two uh, type N spectra are also eventually going to agree. Uh, so the, the point of all of this is that these are what I'll say is that they're asymptotically well-defined. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit about spectral sequences. Um, there are really a lot of spectral sequences running around in this story. Um, and so I'll try to give some idea of how they relate. Uh, the first one is the chromatic spectral sequence. And so I'll talk about that first. All right. So recall this fact that I told you that it's going to get fed in to the chromatic spectral sequence, uh, to give the chromatic spectral sequence, and the fact is that the map on MU homology, uh, I'm just going to start writing CN for short. This is CN of the sphere, or of the P local sphere. Uh, no, I guess it does matter. Uh, okay. Okay, so Recall, this is, this is the statement that went into proving chromatic convergence. And uh, there's this additional fact. So I have, uh, well, so you'll remember how we defined CN. Uh, so CN is the fiber of mapping, uh, the identity mapping to LN. And so if I have SP and I map to 
ln of sp. I'm actually just going to rotate this a little bit. Uh, so I've got the suspension of cn sp. And, okay, well, I'm actually not going to use any homology, but everything is p local, so I may as well just use bp. And when I apply bp to this whole thing, the additional fact is that this is actually a split short exact sequence. So I've got a split in here, and this is a surjection, and that's an injection. Um, okay, so now I can say, well, what happens when I apply the map down, apply BP homology to the map down to LN minus 1? Um, well, I still have this splitting. And what did we just say? Well, we said that this map was 0 on M homology. And that's going to imply that it's also 0 on BP homology. And of course, this is just the identity map on spectra, uh, sorry, on, on, on the BP coefficients. And so it's just an equality. And so this actually tells us everything that's going on in BP homology here. Right? We have this factor BP star, which is the identity. And then we have this other factor, which maps zero. You can trace the diagram, and it's true. And so what this means is that, well, we have uh, MN uh, mapping into LN and mapping down to LN minus 1. And we can apply BP homology to this fiber sequence. And Well, what I would like, okay, so we also have this map. This is a minus one shift, uh, right? This is the long exact sequence. Um, but what we just observed is that besides this, this uh, piece of coefficients, this map is zero. So what I want to do is I'm going to write reduced, uh, even though that isn't technically right. But the point is that when I, when I write this here, well, these pieces kill each other off anyways. Nothing's changing up here. And what I get then is that this is zero. In other words, these long exact sequences, when I throw away these factors, are splitting up into short exact sequences. And this is true for all n. So wait, is this splitting natural? Because like in interest in general, if you have a splitting, like can't you not deduce things about the middle map? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, uh, is the splitting natural? Um, well, I mean, considering that it's true for all n, it's probably pretty natural. I don't remember the proof well enough. Um, it is true in any case that this map is zero once you yeah. throw away the coefficients. And so now I have all these short exact sequences, and right, like this guy goes down, and we have n minus one here, and these things all just barely touch each other. And we know what to do when we see that. So we have all these short exact sequences. Um, and so let's apply, well, I'm going to write it as cohomology, but this is in BP star BP co-module. So really, I'm talking about x here. And so when I apply, I can write that. When I apply cohomology, I get a bunch of long exact sequences, which also touch each other. And the way I'm going to write this out is as an exact couple, which I j of the so-called reduced BP homology of LN, uh, mapping to a copy of itself, and then at the bottom here we've got In the middle. So this is the cohomology of the BP homology of MN of the sphere. All right. <coughs> so, I mean, these all shift the i, j, and n. This is a trigraded spectral sequence. These maps all shift the i, j, and n just a bit. Um, but I'm not going to write that down. You can figure it out yourself if you'd like. Uh, but 
just in terms of the big picture story here, I want to tell you what this gives. So what this is giving us is that if we have this cohomology of the BP homology of the nth monochromatic layer, well, this, this is the E1 page of what's called the chromatic spectral sequence. Okay? What does the chromatic spectral sequence converge to? Well, I actually lied slightly. At the very bottom, you have to do some, you have to do some tricks. Uh, uh, but when, at the end of the day, this actually ends up being a resolution of BP star itself. And so what this converges to is actually the cohomology of BP star. Okay, well, what is this? This is nothing but the E2 term of the adams novikov spectral sequence for the sphere. And what does this converge to? Well, this is supposed to converge to the homotopy groups of spheres. Okay, now, this is not the only thing you could have expected to do. Um, there's another way you could try to get at this. Well, remember, the chromatic convergence tells us that the the, the tower of uh, the, the the limit of the tower um, is just the sphere, and so we could expect that maybe we would just take take homotopy groups uh, of the chromatic tower, and we would get a, an exact couple and an, and a spectral sequence that way. Um, this ought to be called the chromatic spectral sequence, but it isn't. So I'm going to call this instead the topological chromatic spectral sequence. And it converges here. And to con I'll call this one the algebraic so chromatic spectral sequence. What does this come from? Well, it's E1 page. You just look at what we've got. It's E1 page is the homotopy groups of the monochromatic layers. How can we get those? Well, we can get those from another atom spectral sequence uh, for mn. And how do we get this? Well, the input to this is just x of the BP homology. In other words, this is the same piece of info that's going down here. So this is the E2 page. All right. So this is, this is a picture which sort of relates these two uh, paths from this relatively computable data all the way down to the homotopy groups of spheres. Um, but in fact, it's even better than that. So I'm going to define uh, this BP star BP co-module, uh, MRS. This is just for notation. This is VR plus S inverse of the BP coefficients. So then you kill off the first R of them directly, VR minus 1. Um, but then additionally, you kill off VR to the infinity all the way up to VR plus S minus 1 to the infinity. So there's R of them here, and there's S of them here, and this is how you get MRS. And in fact, this thing is nothing but the cohomology of M0N. All right, so we might ask, how do we get at this? And well, if you look at this MRS for a second, you can see that they're all related to each other. You could say kill off VR directly instead of just modding by VR to the infinity. And what you get is that there's actually this. Um, so M R plus 1 S minus 1 is exactly M R S, but then you kill VR. OK? Now, we could have, instead of killing VR, we could kill VR squared. And the cofiber of this, if you work it out, is actually just MRS again. And the colimit, well, this is actually the defining thing to get uh, this guy, MRS, mod VR to the infinity. In other words, MRS itself. Okay. So using this, there's actually, well, uh, these are short exact sequences. They all piece together. And uh, using this, did you, uh, we sorry, actually. Did you index the cofiber right? It should be s minus one r plus one. Uh, yeah, thank you. S minus one. 
Okay, and using this, we have all sorts of Bachstein spectral sequences. And the way that they run is that I'll call, I've got, well, so this is really times VR. And so I've got this, what I'll call the V0 Bachstein spectral sequence. And what does that come from? Well, the E1 page, the E1 page of this one is uh, the cohomology. I'm, sh I'm trading off these two indices. So M1 up to N minus 1. Okay, and if I want to get to this thing, well, obviously, I've got the same story. So, I can go all the way back, and at the very top, I've got a Vn minus 1 Bachstein spectral sequence. Um, and what does this come from? Well, again, uh, this, is, this is the top of the picture. This is the cohomology of Mn0. So, in other words, we can get from here to there, uh, in n steps of Bakhtin's Bakhtin special sequences. Now, what is this? Well, actually, if you look at it, this is just the cohomology of the P BP homology of the KM local sphere. What spectral sequence does this fit into? Well, this just starts off the Adams Novikov spectral sequence for the KM local sphere. And this converges to the homotopy groups of the KM local sphere. There's even more. Uh, this is often cited as uh, the Morava change of rings theorem uh, to be the same thing as the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer group uh, with these coefficients, Morava E theory coefficients. And, well, so the Morava change of rings theorem is talking about changes of rings. Uh, so you can change to Morava E theory, and then this is really just when you kind of interpret it algebra geometrically in terms of stacks. And so this is the Morava change of rings theorem. Now this actually comes, uh, Debenets Hopkins proved that the K on local sphere is actually the fixed points of Morava En against this stabilizer group. And so, in other words, there's a homotopy fixed point spectral sequence for the fact that these are the fixed points, and that converges to these same homotopy groups. In fact, these are the same spectral sequence. That's almost it. Um, but going from here, well, in fact, there are even, I guess I want to write it, yeah, so here there are uh, N Bachstein spectral sequences. And what you can converge to is the, the cohomology, instead of the Morava stabilizer group in just the En star coefficients, uh, we can take En star mod P to the infinity, all these different guys to the infinity, and this guy converges. Uh, uh, this is again the Morava change of rings theorem. This converges relatedly, instead of the KM local sphere, it's the monochromatic sphere. All right, so we've got N Bachstein spectral sequences running from here to here. And, well, once again, we can use Morava change of rings theorem and algebraic geometry. So unfortunately, I've run out of board. But actually, that's OK, because we end up all the way back where we started. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Questions, please. <laughs> um, how much is this little square going to be used to like, do good things? I have no idea. I'm not, I would ask you. Yeah, it seems very similar. This to thing? Like, uh, some theorem which hangs in. What is that? Oh, he uses. Uh, Place of BP and H together and has a little square of spectral sequences, <coughs> differentials of one, polygon differentials of another. So maybe like chromatic differentials will tell you about differentials and uh, this other chromatic, top loss or chromatic one or something. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I would believe that it thinks that's something. I don't know if that's this diagram. But if it relates, if well, it has to do with. It's, it's certainly different, but similar techniques. Okay, yeah, I mean, if it has to do with the, 
this is the ordinary chromatic spectral sequence. If it has to do with this and with some atoms Novikov, it probably is related. Is the topological chromatic spectral sequence at all tractable for direct calculations? I also have no idea. I worked this out like way last night. <laughs> so I, the, it's just yeah. the Shimomura calculations of the only topic you to local sphere, you use a truncated form of the topological chromatic. So uh, here, when you take that component, um, that's kind of doing uh, P infinity up to P and minus one infinity. Mm -hmm. So then you like to add that bit and then put that thing to the end. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, where, where I read this, there was not a reference given, meaning it's just yeah. so well known. Yeah. That's, that's not identification there, right? That's the, Which is? I mean, oh, the, these the days. homology of n zero sub n, like it's coming yeah. down to that fact. Yeah, this is yeah. We're taking the BP homology of this MN guy, and this, this comes from a high Yeah, yeah, that works. Let's thank Owen again.